Hi everyone, we are just waiting for a few more people to join and then we will get started. No, are we good? Yep. Okay, great. Um, good afternoon and welcome everyone. Um, I don't know if you can see me, but um, I'm Ann Del Castillo, Commissioner of the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment. Um, and uh, we are um, very happy to welcome you all here. For those of you who may not be familiar with our office, um, Many of you might know us um, uh, mostly as the film office uh, uh, issuing permits. Um, uh, but in the last several years, our office has um, expanded to include five divisions now. Um, in addition to permitting film and television production, uh, we also run the city's municipal radio and broadcast network, NYC Media. Uh, we um, also have the Office of Nightlife, the Press Credentials Office, and uh, Creative Sector Programs, which covers uh, film, television, theater, music, advertising, publishing, and digital content, uh, including video games. Um, so we're essentially the focus of our office, in addition to supporting our um, film and television industry, is really supporting, promoting, and growing uh, all of New York City's creative sectors, which represent about 150 billion in economic activity and close to half a million jobs. Um, film and television production still represent the lion's share of our creative economy um, with 82 billion in economic activity and uh, roughly 185,000 jobs. Um, and so with that in mind, you know, we are at the end of week three of the Writers Guild strike and we don't really have uh, a read on how long it will go, uh, but we certainly wanted to make sure that creative workers or workers um, that are supporting the creative economy have access to the information and resources um, that you may need during this time. Um, and so I wanna thank our, our panelists, um, Lars Thompson from the Department of, from the New York State Department of Labor, uh, Carlos Ortiz from the New York City Department of Consumer and Worker Protection, Leonard Battle and Ariane Cavarullas from uh, New York uh, City Small Business Services, uh, Barbara Davis, Lillian Gal Galina, Patch Schwadron from the Entertainment Community Fund, um, and Rafael Espinal from uh, the Freelancers Hub. I also want to acknowledge that Alton Murray from the Department of Consumer, um, no, excuse me, the Department of Cultural Affairs uh, is joining us as well. Um, you know, we, the people on the panelists represented here um, are here to share information about resources um, uh, that are available to all of you. Uh, I also just want to take a minute to acknowledge and thank the staff at MOM that pulled this together in uh, record time. Uh, Fabri Crouch, who is our deputy director at the film office. Uh, Marisa Redanti, who is our creative sector programs um, outreach coordinator. And Noel Murray, who is our creative sector programs associate. Um, and so with that, I, I know we want to get underway, make sure that uh, we can get this webinar underway. And so I'm going to throw it over to you, Tabri, to moderate. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, I also wanted to add thank you for your fearless leadership and again, pulling this together in record time. Um, so we have first up in our panel of uh, esteemed speakers is Lars Thompson. Uh, 
Associate Commissioner for UI Claims Processing and Quality Review for the New York State Department of Labor. Um, a little bit about the Department of Labor and UID. Uh, the New York State Department of Labor is committed to transforming New York's world of work through empowering and protecting workers, uh, building and supporting businesses, and helping New Yorkers find the careers they love. The DOL assists those who have lost their jobs at no fault of their own through unemployment insurance. So Lars, please take it away. Okay, getting fired up here. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Director, and thank you again, Commissioner, for uh, for having us here today. Uh, I'm going to share my screen here and get underway. It looks like uh, should be up and running. Okay, so a um, little bit to cover on in the next few minutes here. I'm here to talk today about the unemployment insurance program that the New York State Department of Labor runs. And first thing I wanted to make sure everyone knew was this. Um, we have a multitude of resources available online uh, directly to unemployment insurance. The top address is the one you're going to want to have. Uh, that is a shortened URL, but I assure you it goes right to our website. That is on.ny.gov slash UI and also our main web page for the Department of Labor and all the services we uh, want to connect our workers with is dol.ny.gov. I'm here today to talk about unemployment insurance, quote unquote, regular unemployment insurance. Talk a little bit about what it is. Uh, it's temporary income. It's funded by employers here in the state for workers who become unemployed due to no fault of their own. And obviously the most important bullet here for today, this does include all the workers in the surrounding industries that have been impacted uh, by the accident the last few weeks. Uh, it's fully funded for by employer payroll taxes. Uh, workers do not pay for it. Uh, do not pay into it here in the state of New York. So it's been pay fully paid for by the work that is being done uh, every day. Talk a little bit about some qualification requirements here. Again, this is just the high level. We're going through it just so you have some baseline information. Uh, obviously, you have to have worked in some calendar quarters. There's some earnings requirement. Uh, this is $3,100 is the minimum in a quarter, which is, again, 13-week period of time. Uh, you have to have earned a certain amount of money. There's, there's a formula there. And you also must be employed through no fault of your own. And one thing I'd like to highlight on our website is we actually do have a calculator where you can enter in your wages and it will uh, give you an estimate of what it is your benefit may be. Uh, one of the bullets here we talked about was a base period. Well, what exactly is that? This is how far back we look uh, when, you, when you're filing a claim. So the dates here, if a claim was to be filed next week, as you can see, we're looking at the earnings in 2022. Anything before then, anything after that, we would not be bringing into the claim. Uh, if you needed additional period of time, you, we would go as soon as the first quarter of this year. Um, so you could go through March 31st. Anything after that, though, would not be brought into the claim. And again, all this is available online uh, that you can learn more about uh, at, your, at your own discretion. How much money are we talking here? The most you can earn per week is $504 here in the state of New York, but the least amount is $124 per week. So that's the range of your benefits. How long does it last? Claim is open for a year. And at that point in time, the most you can receive is 26 weeks of full benefits. We also pay partial benefits. I'll talk a little bit about that in just a second. So if you say your benefit rate's $400, you get 26 weeks times $400. But if you have one week where you only got $300, it's not use it or lose it. That money stays on your claim. How do you qualify? Well, again, you must have no fault of your unemployment. You have to be totally out of work, but you have to be looking for work um, or able to work. Um, if you are performing some work while you have a claim, we do allow you to do that. We want you to stay connected to work um, by all means. And if you're working under a certain amount, we'll only reduce your benefits by 25%. Um, again, this is all online, but if you work under 10 hours in a week, for example, and you earn under the max rate I referred to, you'll receive all of your unemployment insurance benefits. There'll be no reduction. Again, we want you to stay connected and we have other resources to talk about there. Uh, this is a program that's usually for workers who are, you know, we call it W-2, not 1099s, but that does not mean you should not file a claim if you are seeking benefits. Um, so there's some bullets here about, you know, who is covered and who is not. But the most important point I want to raise is, is we will review everything after you file. Same things as you own your own business and you're an officer in your corporation. Again, there's some things that we need to look at, but we will review it. And the questions you're asked when you file your claim, uh, you'll be able to provide that information and determine, you know, if you'll be eligible or not. 
When do you want to file? You want to file the first full week, the first week you're out of work. You have a Monday to Saturday to file that claim. Also, if you miss that week, file as soon as you can. We can make adjustments to your dates. You don't want to wait though. Okay, so we're going to go online or call and we'll get to that in just a second. What do you need to file? Well, what's up on the screen? Obviously, you're going to need your phone number, your mailing address. We will need your social security number. Have your government ID ready when you file. If you're going to go for direct deposit for your benefits, make sure you have your banking information when you go online. Uh, otherwise, we'll issue a debit card. And also all of your employer information. That's going to be important, and especially going back to those periods I talked to you about before. So try to have that information. And again, I'm going to be moving ahead in the interest of time, but we have some amazing resources that will cover all of that for you uh, if you do need to come online and file a claim. And how are you going to do that? You're going to go online. There's the website. Uh, we've got our phone number. And we have some amazing online resources that we'll be making available. Uh, we have an amazing video that covers everything for a first-time customer from, from start to finish. We have some new web resources, that benefit process bullet there. Uh, that's a brand new resource that just came out last week. We think it covers a lot of for, for everyone, whether you filed or not before. Our socials are there. And then also we do want to remind that we have some career services as well. Um, some questions maybe about our ID verification process. We do have that. Um, not everyone's required to go through it. It's a secure third-party system, but you're only going to use it if the Department of Labor lets you know that that's something you need to go through. When will you receive your first payment? Could take up to three to six weeks, but again, the more information you have at the time you file your claim, that, that, that time can be significantly reduced, okay? Anytime we reach out to you after you file a claim, Please return the information. If you get a phone call, call us back and the ball will then be in our court. And you can want to continue to certify each and every week. Okay. And then once you're eligible, everything that's due to you will be paid to you. Going back to the beginning, wanted to make sure that these websites were, were, were known. Again, the top one brings you directly to unemployment insurance resources. And the second link will bring you to our main webpage where we have not just unemployment insurance, but a lot of other resources to connect workers uh, to employment during these, during these times. So with that, that'll be the end of my presentation. Again, thank you for having us here. And uh, we are here to serve you. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to helping in any way we can. Thank you. Thank you, Lars. Um, so please post your questions to the question and answer chat box uh, rather than the webinar chat so that everything is grouped together and then we will pull from those questions towards the end. Uh, next up is Carlos Ortiz. Uh, Carlos is the Assistant Commissioner of External Affairs for New York City's Department of Consumer and Worker Protection, uh, which is formerly the Department of Consumer Affairs, DCA. It's now DCWP. Uh, DCWP protects and enhances the daily economic lives of New Yorkers to create thriving communities. He will speak to freelancer protections and financial empowerment services. Carlos, please take it away. Thank you. I'll, I'll jump right into it. Um, let me see if I can just pull up my screen here. So um, can folks see that? I think they can. Okay. So the uh, Department of Consumer Worker Protection is the city's leading agency for municipal workplace rights, uh, consumer rights, and free uh, financial empowerment services uh, provided by professionals that are contracted by, by the city. Um, uh, today, uh, let me speak to you in particular about a couple of things. The first being uh, New York City's Freelance Isn't Free Act. This is a, a, a law that which DCWP administers that establishes basic worker protections for freelancers in New York City includes a basic right um, um, uh, to a written contract, particularly for uh, agreements over $800, uh, a right to timely payment for freelancers, uh, a right to file a complaint, as well as freedom from retaliation um, from, from any hiring party. Now, this law applies to uh, all, in, all individuals that are hired or retained as independent contractors in New York City, um, and it also applies to folks regardless uh, of immigration status. Um, the way this law really works is that DCWP works with um, uh, a freelancer if they have a complaint on resolution and also on legal legal services navigation. Um, so it's it's very important, very vital for us that you know folks come to us if they have complaints. If there's a hiring party that has violated your rights, you can come to us. And what our process is is that we will notify the hiring party uh, of the complaint. We will work with them to try and recover restitution. Um, if the hiring party does not respond. 
what we do is we, we can use that, um, we can provide that information to you for you to bring that to court. Uh, and at court, you will be able to use the, the, the hiring party's lack of response um, as kind of a, a rebuttable presumption is what we call it. Essentially, it's, uh, it's almost like the, the case starts off in your favor, um, really. Um, since this law has been in place, we've helped uh, close to a thousand New Yorkers recover uh, about $2.7 million in restitution. Uh, for us, it is essential and vital that workers in New York City, when they're doing the work, that they get paid for their work. So we are we are totally committed to to facilitating uh, anyone who's working in freelance um, under this law. Uh, the next topic uh, that I can jump into if I'm moving quickly, uh, I'd like to talk to folks about our financial empowerment programs. Now, uh, we offer two principal financial empowerment services. One is uh, free financial counseling at our financial empowerment centers. Uh, this is one-on-one -on -one counseling with a professional provider that helps you figure out your budget, figure out how to, how to you know, accrue savings during particular times, figure out how to reduce your debt during particular times. How can we improve credit and get you connected with really safe um, uh, and vital uh, uh, formal banking products or formal credit products? Uh, for us, um, this is one of our flagship programs at, at the agency. We, we encourage folks to go here um, many times, you know, in, in many circumstances, people can build longstanding relationships with their financial counselor and can be particularly helpful in, in moments when, when you need to uh, uh, work through your finances um, with, with somebody that you can trust and rely on. Um, the next service I, want to, I really want to talk about is, um, is our New York City free tax prep. Um, this is a year-round service where you can get your taxes done for free. And this is also... Um, something that's available for individuals, for families. It's also uh, available for self-employed uh, folks and, and small businesses. Uh, under a recent expansion, of, uh, thanks to Mayor Adams, we'll be offering more of the self-employed free tax prep uh, to folks. Our goal is to ensure that, that New Yorkers have access to these uh, trusted resources um, that they can use without a cost. Um, um, you know, since, since some of these programs started, we have helped New Yorkers um, save more than $10 million. Um, we've helped New Yorkers reduce their debt by $93 million. Um, just last year, we were able to help New Yorkers uh, complete 78,000 tax returns for free. Uh, and if you think about that, in terms of the $100 you might save on a tax on a tax repairs fees, it really is um, very, um, I think something that's very vital for, for, for folks to take advantage of um, um, should, should, they, should they wanna take, should they wanna use those resources. Um, with that, I know I know I'm on limited time, so I, I, I'll, I'll I'll hand it over to uh, the next presenter. Um, but I'll be sure to drop also some some uh, connections uh, that you can make to our agency in the in the chat as well. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Carlos. We have two partners from SBS, uh, Leonard Battle, as well as Aaron Covarrubias. Leonard is the Director of Community Partners Programs for New York City's Department of Small Business Services. Uh, and Aaron Covarrubias is the Director of Media and Entertainment Training. So uh, the Department of Small Business Services offers a wide variety of free and high quality services to help New Yorkers start, operate, and grow small businesses and connect to good jobs. Uh, today, they will speak directly to workforce training programs. Thank you, Thori. Um, it's telling me that I'm not able to share. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Um, while I put my presentation up, I just want to take a second to share, to thank mom uh, uh, to putting this together and uh, for having us here. Um, I am Aaron Cabardo Villas, I'm the Director of Training for Media and Entertainment at SBS. And I would like to share uh, some more of the resources that we have for New Yorkers. One of them is the Made in New York post-production training program. Um, this is a training program, um, obviously, that uh, uh, we offer in partnership with MOM that uh, seeks to um, train and uh, get access, uh, provide access to New Yorkers to the post-production industry. This is a six-week full-time training uh, where participants learn the basics of uh, everything about, about around post-production, uh, including the software that is usually used in the industry, standard photo editing, video, um, photo, video editing, sound design, color correction, and visual effects software. 
Um, the training also includes some skills that uh, post-production professionals often need, including financial coaching, a legal primer, marketing and sales, uh, particularly for project-based workers. Uh, you see some of the job titles that some of the, of, of the graduates from this program access right after this program, like post-production assistant, post-production coordinator, and so forth. Um, we partner with uh, Brooklyn Workforce Innovation to implement this, this, this program. You see some of the eligibility requirements in here. Um, I, I, I'm going to emphasize that uh, this and all of the information is and will be available in the web, in our website. And of course, you'll have access to it uh, during and after this, uh, this presentation um, at nyc.gov slash SBS. Uh, we just started um, training for our last or for most recent cohort this Monday, but we plan to offer our next cohort in uh, in September, beginning of September. So if you or someone uh, you know is interested, uh, please uh, visit our website uh, early August, which is when we start recruiting for the next cohort. The first the first step on the recruitment process is to attend an info session online and. All of the information uh, will be posted on our website um, uh, by, by then. Um, with that, I want to hand it over to my colleague, uh, Leonard, who will be talking about our Workforce One Career Centers. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, and thank you for having us here today uh, to share this information. So the New York City Department of Small Business Services oversees and uh, manages the uh, public employment system that is known under the brand of Workforce One. Um, in those centers, we have 18 of them across the five boroughs. Um, and uh, you can see here from the numbers here that we do serve quite a bit of New Yorkers who are looking to connect to job opportunities. Um, in our centers, if you are uh, 18 years of age or older, you are a um, New York City resident and you are eligible to work in the United States, you can utilize the services at our center. What do we offer? Uh, we offer job seeker uh, preparation services, which includes specialized and general workshops. Um, we have resource room, um, computers available for folks that want to do independent job searches. And we even uh, more recently offer financial counseling, which is all free of charge um, at our Workforce One Career Centers as well. We also can provide you with one-on-one -on -one career advisement. Uh, and that would include uh, creating what is known as an individualized employment plan, which is your roadmap from where you are to getting to the goal of seeking employment. Um, and then we also, at the very end of all of that, hope that we can successfully connect you to employment, um, which is the ultimate goal. And in some cases, as my colleague uh, just shared about the specific media training program, we have other trainings that are available. If someone is looking to uh, make a career change, um, to go into a different sector or industry, um, we will work with you in order to facilitate that as well. Um, Aaron, can you go to the next slide? Thank you. How do I connect to Workforce One? You can do it two ways. Um, generally, you can do it um, online. We will definitely make the link available for everyone to be able to do so. You would click, once you go to the website here, you see the page, you click on the register now. Um, once you've registered with us at Workforce One, you are now eligible to utilize and access any and all of the services that we provide to New York City job seekers. Um, and once you've registered, um, you can actually uh, participate in workshops either online, virtually or in person. Um, and our centers are now um, continuously bringing more individuals back into the centers in person now that we are sort of coming out of the reality of the pandemic. Um, but you can certainly uh, communicate with us online as well. So Workforce One is here to help any job seeker who is looking to access job seeker preparation services, as well as connect to a training or and or job opportunities. Um, and I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to share this information with you. We're here to help and serve you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Leonard and Aaron. Uh, next up, we have Barbara Davis. Um, along joining joining Barbara are Lillian Galina, Director of Work, Workplace Initiatives and Patch Swadron, Career Counselor Supervisor. Uh, Barbara Davis is our Chief Operating Officer for the Entertainment Community Fund, formerly known as the Actors Fund. 
Thank you, and I apologize in advance. I have a bit of laryngitis, um, so I'm going to let Lillian and Patch do most of the talking. Um, first, I just want to familiarize people. The entertainment uh, industry, the Entertainment Community Fund, is a national nonprofit human service organization for everybody that works in performing arts and entertainment. Uh, Lily is going to talk a little bit about our social services, mental health services, and emergency financial assistance, and Patch is going to cover the Career Center. I do want to mention that in addition to those areas, uh, we also do a lot of work around helping people access health insurance uh, when they're uninsured through our Artists Health Insurance Resource Center, as well as providing direct medical care to the performing arts and entertainment community through the Friedman Health Center for the Performing Arts. This is a health, a health center, uh, primary and specialty care that we run in partnership with Mount Sinai. So these are all Mount Sinai physicians. Uh, for anyone in the industry who's uninsured, they can be seen at our health center for $40 a visit. Um, so if you're interested in new primary care doc, um, take a look at our website and you can learn more about it. Um, Lily, I'm going to turn it over to you. Great, thank you. I hope folks can see me. Um, <clears throat> Thank you so much for having us here today. Um, and as part of the services that we offer at the Entertainment Community Fund um, is really that social support network that we're um, hoping that anybody in performing arts and entertainment knows about. I want to say, I don't know if Barbara said it, but we were formerly the Actors Fund. <laughs> um, so if that's more familiar to you, um, we're the same people, um, we're the same organization, um, just with a new name change to better reflect all the people that we serve in the industry. Um, we really help in four main areas, social, service, social services, housing, healthcare, and career development and support. Uh, when it comes to social services, uh, you know, thinking about the financial impact um, that many uh, folks in performing arts um, and entertainment might be experiencing right now as a result um, <clears throat> of this strike. We do have um, some emergency financial assistance. Um, our eligibility you can find on our website at entertainmentcommunity.org. Uh, but we do um, need to show that somebody has worked um, professionally in the performing arts industry for three out of the last seven years um, and that we have yearly earnings um, eligibility that we look at as well. So we encourage everyone to go to our website, take a look to see we offer one-time um, emergency financial grants in times of financial hardship. Um, so please take a look at our website and see if you may be eligible. Um, as part of our social services, we, we've talked um, all of the great resources today here have talked um, about getting that um, work support and financial support. Um, we also wanna mention the impact that um, it has on one's mental health um, and one's state of being. And we just want you to know that we do have support um, for you in that way. So we offer mental health assessments and referrals, crisis support, support groups, um, daily mindfulness meditation, all types of different um, wellness supports in that way to help you navigate um, the emotional and the mental health challenges that come about um, during this time. There's a lot of unknowns um, right now and moving forward, and we want to be that support um, that, that can help you with that. Uh, we also have some specific member assistance programs um, for some entertainment unions that allow you to access um, some additional supports. That includes some IAs, Local 52, um, the Wardrobe Union, Local 60, 764, and Hair and Makeup, IA Local 798. Um, we also have a member assistance program with the Musicians Local 802 um, and the United Scenic Artists 829. So I know that those unions have all um, been impacted by this writer's strike and want to make sure that they're aware um, that we do have that member assistance program specifically for you. 
Uh, <clears throat> so we encourage you to reach out for social services, for emergency assistance, um, and to access our programs around self-care and mental health during this time. Um, and for to learn a little bit more about career and job development support during this as well, I'm going to um, send it over to Patch. Hi, <laughs> the magic worked. Um, it's so great to hear from everyone else uh, as well, because a lot of what happens at the fund is really looking at the, the whole world of the arts worker. And so as part of your support system, you want to take advantage of the Career Center as well. And at the Career Center, uh, we offer a variety of career management workshops. Everyone is welcome to attend, uh, look at our calendar, uh, pick a workshop, including an upcoming bi-weekly job cer search workshop focusing specifically on developing income sources during a strike or during a pause. So it's, we're really looking at what are your needs in terms of generating income at a time when um, uh, your work source has, has been stopped. Uh, our programs, are, needless to say, maybe, but I want you to know, are, uh, are at no cost to you. The fund does its fundraising so that we can be a resource to you. Uh, the first step is to attend a virtual orientation. They're Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, and also uh, look at our workshop calendar. I'll put the links in the chat. Uh, you can also find all this by going on the website. Um, specifically, a webinar on careers and content creation uh, will be uh, presented on Wednesday, May 31st. So you might wanna find that on the calendar and sign up. All our programs are uh, remote via Zoom at this point. Um, so uh, happy to answer any other questions, but I will put, these links in the chat right now. Great, thank you, Patch. And we did put into the chat the um, our stretching your dollar uh, document. So it's a really wonderfully put together document on stretching your dollar during times like this. Um, so please take a look at it. That's it for us. <laughs> thank you thank you to our partners at the entertainment community fund um uh next up uh last but not least rounding out this panel is uh rafael espinal um as executive director of the freelancers hub um the a little bit about the freelancers hub it's a community space designed to help New York City's freelancers thrive. The hub provides free educational workshops, legal and financial clinics, benefits assistance, and community events. And uh, Raphael can certainly speak more to that. Well, thank you so much. And I want to thank uh, Moam and thank the commissioner for putting together this very important webinar. Uh, we at the Freelancers Hub, you know, understand that while people are unemployed or under or underemployed. They often turn to uh, independent work, freelance work, as a way to substitute uh, their income or, or make some extra revenue uh, dur during that time. So we at the Freelancer Cell, we, we are a, a co-working space, a free co-working space that uh, has been sponsored by Mo, in which you are able to come in, uh, book a desk uh, through our website at freelancershub.nyc and be able to co-work for free. Uh, it's it's uh, really an opportunity for, for you to sit down, orient yourself, meet other people uh, who are performing independent work, and also have direct access to our staff who will be able to help you uh, orient you uh, as you perform uh, freelance work. Uh, we like to uh, focus on education because we understand that a lot of freelancers are often uh, exploited and taken advantage of. Uh, so we ensure that you have all, all of the proper tools and education you need to ensure that you're protected, uh, especially around non-payment. Uh, as you heard earlier, DCWP is the agency in charge of enforcing the Freelancers and Free Act. Uh, so we as an organization really uh, do the work to ensure that you are working with a contract, making sure that at the end of the job, you're getting paid on time. And if they don't pay you on time, that we, we operate as a resource that you can lean to uh, in case that happens. But also at the Hub, outside of uh, having a free desk in which you're able to come in and use, uh, we also provide programming. That programming is done about twice a week. 
uh, and, it call, and it covers a whole, a whole bunch of uh, different topics uh, from as simple as learning how to write a contract uh, to as a little more comprehensive to understanding uh, the different clauses within contracts and making sure that those those contracts you work with are bulletproof, uh, but also to help you upskill. You know, if you're if you're looking for for work outside of your current profession or outside of your current skills, uh, we offer classes on, for example, how to turn your writing school skills into marketing skills, uh, how to turn your your writing skills towards journalism. Uh, we have real professionals come in and teach those classes. Uh, and again, we, we we see ourselves as a place of uh, resource, as a place of education. And is also as a place in which can help you orient yourself and uh, expand your opportunities uh, while you're going through this difficult time. So again, we are at freelancershub.nyc. Uh, we have our space in Industry City, Brooklyn. Doors are open Monday through Friday, nine to five. Uh, and uh, if you go on our site, you'll see we'll have desks available for you, uh, which you're able to use. So we encourage you, turn to us, we're here to help. Thank you. Thanks so much, Rafael. Okay, we wanted to remind everyone that uh, this webinar will uh, eventually be posted on YouTube. Uh, so at the conclusion of the webinar, you will have access to uh, the webinar on YouTube. Uh, we will spend the remaining the remaining hour to answering questions. You're quite quite a quite a bit of questions here. Um, we're going to get to as many as possible. So bear with us. Um, okay, let's start with going to actually, a lot of them have to do with unemployment benefits. So let's start with the first one listed here. Um, so this is for Lars. Lars, I believe, there you, there you are. All right, so this is from Brian Mancuso. Hello, if I'm an actor, who cannot afford work because of the w, WGA strike? Am I eligible for UI? I am a member of SAG-AFTRA who is not on strike. I received a letter asking to explain the work stoppage and the questions didn't make sense given the situation since I'm not on strike, but the strike is affecting my ability to book work. Yep. So is he eligible? Well, so, you know, clearly, you know, individual determination of eligibility, I'm not going to be able to do over the webinar here. But as far as surrounding um, this situation, it sounds that perhaps, and this is something I'll, I can expand for those interested, if you have, if you have not filed the claim, unless you are yourself a striking writer, meaning you yourself are out of work because you are involved directly with the strike, I think I saw this question somewhere else in the chat. Your reason for separation would be a lack of work slash layoff. Okay, so um, it sounds that that information was probably sent to you as a result of the answer that the system obtained. You'd want to return that as to my earlier point, um, indicating you yourself are not on strike and that you know you, your work had ended because of everything surrounding that. So that's the most succinct way for me to answer that question, uh, and hopefully also cover the rest of the topics surrounding those that have been impacted by the strike. So. Again, if if you yourself are not on strike and you are surrounding this, your separation, unless you said I'm quitting or you said, you know, go ahead and fire, you know, it would be a lack of work. Okay. Uh, another question relating to um, the week of benefits. This is from an anonymous attendee. The film industry has been very slow since January 2023. Apparently, as productions didn't want to start up to be to be only shut down by the May, May strike, many people have been on unemployment for, for a few months already. What happens if we run out of the 26th week of benefits? Are there additional benefit options? Yeah. Um, thank you for that question. Um, so at this point in time, New York State only administers our base state program, which is the 26 weeks of benefits. Extended benefits are only available uh, when the overall economy as a whole enters into a different, different scenario, not impacted industries, unfortunately. So there are no extended benefits at this time. Um, once, if you are within your benefit year and the 26 weeks have been exhausted, for our current program right now, what we're at the you know New York State Department of Labor are able to offer is 
um, you know, you'd have th that benefit year would need to run out and then you could refile for eligibility. But there are no extensions in place at this time, either at the state or the federal level. But Lars, they're able to, to refile, which means they can re up the benefits through re refiling once their year is over. So your if your claim if you began a claim in uh, March of 2022, it's now past March of 2022, so you could file a new claim. But if you have a claim that is good until August of 2023, and that claim the 26 weeks are out, you have to wait till after August 2023. That's the that's unfortunately that that's how our program our base program works, and that's the current program that we're in. Copy that. Okay. There are quite a few questions related to loan out, escorts, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. So many, many film workers are paid through their own escort. How does that affect their benefits? Will they still get paid? So that's something I try to touch upon earlier in the slide, and I can touch a little bit more about that. That's something you're, you will need to, to disclose during the application process. Um, the question we ask specifically is, have you been an officer of any corporation within the last 18 months? For those folks, you know, it would tend to be the answer would be yes. So that's something that, you know, we will flag and, and review as part of the claims review process. Uh, that's a very nuanced um, uh, area here. Uh, it is one, though, that I can speak to that we are taking very seriously, considering the gravity and the magnitude of what we're going through now and the, and the time. So, um Again, there's no patent answer yes or no at this point, but it is something that, you know, the first part has to do with the wages we talked about a little bit, you know, whether you are you paying into the system. So obviously, most people that are members of an S corporation are, are paying quarterly taxes, are paying unemployment insurance taxes on themselves, right? So that part is at least covered, but there are other parts, and we just don't have enough time to get specifics of the law, where we'd have to review that. So it's just going to be important that you provide that information up front and that, that you're responsive during the process so that we can ultimately determine if you would ultimately be eligible. There are conditions of the law that allow for both sides, hence why I can't just make a pat answer of yes or no. But we, 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 we're, we're understanding that that is definitely a part of this situation, and it's one that we are taking very seriously, and we have additional eyes laid on it as well. So we're, we're trying to make sure that, you know, that the, this group is... When these claims come in, we are focusing on these answers and criteria uh, to provide best service. Got it. So there, it's it, many of this is case by case, um, specific to the specific situation of each each worker. Um, this also applies to questions about 1099s versus W W twos. I think this is a W two. Yes. So, um, can you speak to that? Uh, Will will they qualify either or W T work W two worker ten ninety nine? So yep, yeah, thank you for for bringing that up. I figured we talk a little bit about that. So again, it it, it can depend on the type of ten ninety nine. It can depend, you know, did you elect to be on a ten ninety nine, or was that just something that the the job you were on the employer gave to you? Because then there could be a question of really what's that level of engagement there. It is case by case. Um, one thing I'll speak to is you know we did have a program here in New York and also through the rest of the country as little back as 2020, correct, called the, through the CARES Act, where a lot of 1099 workers were covered because of the, the, the program that was being offered. Um, you know, prototypically, we have 150 to 200,000 workers in our regular UI program per week. During the height of the recession, because 1099 workers were covered, we had over 4 million at a time. So there are there's some recency going through the population about 1099 workers and, and eligibility for benefits prior to the pandemic that was typically no, but we always reviewed it. So I don't want to discourage anyone who's listening to this in your situation for going, I'm 1099, forget it, I'm out. But that's not what we're saying. Um, we will review it and need to review it. And, you know, when you file your claim, you provide all the employment. And again, if you're working for yourself, you let us know that. If you're working for employers, you'll let us know that and you'll indicate that it was 1099 and we'll need to review that. So it's not, again, a binary yes or no, but we are in a prototypical regular unemployment insurance. There's a different set of laws. So any decision we make will be based on that criteria. It, now in 2023, 
not from the programs that were federally funded from back in 20 or 2020 or 2021. I'm happy to go a little more into that, but because I know that's in a lot of people's minds. Um, you know, the bottom line is, is if, if, if you're if you're seeking benefits, please file the claim and let us make the decision. OK, because you, you want to protect your rights. That's the most important thing. Clear. That's clear. Please apply on um, everyone who can apply. Please apply. That's 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 the message. Um, I want to make sure that we're covering other questions related to other agencies. Um, again, the majority of, the, of these are unemployment benefit related, uh, but let's see. Um, will the mayor's office notify other agencies to look out for people working in the entertainment business? For example, HRA administration, one shot deal, financial assistance, and food stamps. So we do have a resource page. Um, I will put that in the chat. Uh, there's a list of resources here that also includes resources related to, to human resources administration and other administrations within the, within the city as well. Um, so we will also email all registrants, attendees of to, today's webinar with a follow-up email with links to that page and other resources mentioned today. So um, we will stay in communication. So please look out for an email um, related to all resources and links mentioned today in today's webinar. OK, uh, other questions here? Let's see. Again, I'm looking for maybe not other non-UI questions. Um, let's see. Well, most of them are UI. Um, actually, that's already done. Let's go back. Uh, let's see. This is from Vanessa Rod. What happens if your unemployment benefits are exhausted and your benefit year is still active? Yeah, that that was a scenario I was touching briefly upon before, but I'll I'll gladly go into more detail with that. Yeah, at that point, if 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 your benefit year is still active but the maximum amount of the 26 weeks worth of benefits has been paid out, um, then, then that's what it is at this point in time when it comes to regular unemployment insurance. And you'd have to wait until after that benefit year to refile. Um, and then we can take a look at continued eligibility for a new benefit year. Okay, that was answered. See. Some workers who have lost jobs in the film TV protection industry due to the WGA strike are also officers of their own corporations. Uh, for many, these corporations are tied exclusively to providing services to the film TV production industry. As such, these corporations are earning no income. Can you offer, can an officer in such a corporation still qualify for unemployment insurance? The answer is potentially based on the type of corporation and after, you know, we review it. So I can't give a blanket yes or no question, but, you know, the reasonability of what level of activities are going on is something we would take into consideration and apply, um, you know, existing case law and, and policies too. So again, not saying yes, but definitely not saying no. And if, if you would like to know, please don't wait to apply and we'll get into it. Okay, um, that was actually answered, yes. Okay, this is a fairly fairly long question, uh, also relating to benefits. If someone needs to show active income to apply for an apartment, however, due to what's happening is dealing with lack of work and is currently freelancing to make deadlines, is there any assistance, actually this is to, I think to everyone in the group, is there any assistance that can be given or resources to take advantage of that will explain to a landlord the full situation and not have a negative impact on one's application moving forward? Okay, so this is specific to rent and housing. Um, 
Would anyone have an answer? Um, I can just say there's not an easy answer for that question. Um, we do run, so people are aware, a regular Finding Affordable Housing in New York City workshop. And we also run a second, and that's really about um, affordable housing, subsidized housing. Um, so using New York City's Housing Connect program with regards to the open market. Uh, we also have a seminar about that. So take a look at our website. Uh, we do have housing specialists, but I can tell you that what they're going to look at is what your annual income is, but there many private landlords are going to want to see current income at that time. Um, but I would encourage people to attend one of those workshops um, and talk to our staff about ideas around securing housing during this time. Uh, we, you know, if you are receiving unemployment insurance benefits or been approved for unemployment insurance benefits, we do, as part of our business, actually are asked from times to provide uh, benef uh, verification notices, which we can provide if, if that, if you fit into that criteria, um, you know, that to, to show something if, if you're connected to UI. Um, and you can actually request that directly off of our webpage now. And, uh, and that can be done via self-service. Um, we actually do offer that now. So for whatever that's worth, from the UI side, that is something that people do ask of us and we provide for these types of situations to whatever it's worth. Okay, uh, next question. This is actually ECF specific. If you've only served for less than the five years, that is a requirement to be eligible for ECF Entertainment Community Fund. Are there references in a cover letter that can be submitted for review? I think I can take this one. <laughs> um, well, we definitely want you to go ahead to our website and take a look and give us a call or reach out or complete an application online. Um, for that eligibility, um, in terms of having worked professionally for three years out of the past seven uh, with income guidelines is um, specifically for our, to apply for our emergency financial assistance. Um, our supports around mental health, um, career support, all of those other things we talked about, our housing workshops, our financial wellness program um, is all self-identified. If you are have been working professionally in the industry yesterday, last year, that's fine. Um, we welcome you um, to participate in our supportive services. To learn specifically about those guidelines um, and eligibility criteria um, for our one-time emergency financial assistance. It's all laid out on our website um, and you can also just give us a call and we'll talk to you directly about it. Um, we're, we're available and we're staffed with social workers that can speak to you about your specific needs, link you to other resources and supports um, and talk to you about your unique situation. I want to go back to the questions related to uh, food stamps and, and food banks. Yes, the city does offer support for food banks and food pantries, um, as well as more information on, on food stamps. So I'm going to put the link to a resource page in the chat. Um, there's a link to Access New York City. It's a city-run portal for New York City residents to determine their eligibility for more than 30 economic programs and benefits. There's also a link to Community Food Connection, which provides groceries to cook at home, uh, community kitchen. So it's all here on this page. So stand by, I'm going to put this in the chat. It's a resource page. Uh, and the Episcopal Actors Guild has a food pantry as well. So there are food related um, support within the city. So, all right, making sure that we're getting to, to as many questions as possible within this, the few minutes that we have. Uh, let's see. Actually, that was answered. Um, Okay, um, all right, there's a question about the difference between, is there a difference, is there a legal difference in regards to unemployment between a furlough and layoffs? Can employees who are furloughed collect unemployment? 
Short answer is yes. Uh, there really is no difference. Um, the only thing that may impact when you could begin potentially is if you were furloughed and received some type of severance package or you know you know leave pay. Uh, that's just something we'd ask you about during the the uh, application process. But no, there is no you know there is no period. Um, one thing I think I wanted to mention you know in the event of a strike, you know striking workers are eligible for unemployment after the 14 day period is over. Um, it's not that, you know, so you have to wait for that, but a furlough, it's the same as a layoff. There's no, there's no legal difference. Okay. Here's a question to your small, small business services partners. Are there any benefits slash resources for small entertainment businesses retaining their staff during the strike? And this could be for anyone actually, but. Are there any benefits, resources for small entertainment businesses retaining their staff during the strike? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to try and speak to that. I'm not sure that we have resources for helping folks to retain their staff. Um, if they're thinking about um, grant money that was available during the pandemic, um, that wasn't necessarily city money, that was money funneled through the city, uh, but we don't have specifically funding like that that would help them to sustain staff. We can point them to um, financial resources that are traditional, such as you know lending institutions and that sort of thing to sort of um, access funding that way. Um, and we would actually help them through our business services uh, to actually put together a package and you know, walk them through the process. But as far as having the ability to give them funding to keep maintain their staff, um, SBS does not have that. Uh, and actually, I, I can jump in. I, it, it, so, you know, if you're a business and you're looking to do things for your workers, New York State does offer what's called a shared work program, which is as a business, you can sort of keep your employees engaged. They can collect unemployment insurance. Uh, but at a reduced level while still maintaining benefits and things like that. Uh, I should have put some of my stuff in earlier, but I did put a, a thing in the chat. So if you're looking to maybe keep your force, maybe shared work might be something you're looking to as well. That way you don't have to out and out lay folks off and you can keep them engaged in a partial schedule. Um, so there is some information there. Thank you. All right. We're going to make sure to, let's, let's take a couple more questions. Um, Right. This is from Megan Stone. What if you've been collecting from a different state and it has run out? Can you now collect from New York since you have also worked in New York? It's a great question. Um, if you've exhausted your benefits in another state, you can file here. And th there we have a uh, we deal a lot with other states, obviously, especially from the tri-state area. Um, or people in this industry who work across the country or in the world. Um, so you can file your claim here. There may need be some verification that you have in fact exhausted, but that is a possibility. So you, you should file to you know, determine what your eligibility would be here if you have exhausted, correct. Okay, um, let's see. Okay, this is a very specific question uh, to Lars. With the new rules, when do we start a, start a new claim? At the week when we are terminated or the following week or after one week of being fully unemployed? For example, if Wednesday the 17th was my last day of work, when do I call in to start a claim? Gotcha. So that if if the separation occurs in the middle of the week, that, that my question would usually then be, how much was there in earnings for the work you performed in that week? If it was over the statutory limit of five hundred and four dollars, we can't give you unemployment or any credit for unemployment in the in a week that you meet that threshold. So in that case, it would be the following week that you would you would file for the claim, um, to, you know, to start it and then start the the waiting week and everything like that. So. Um, that does happen. We ask questions during the claims filing process about that. So the system will will know, you know, based on your answers, if that pertains to you. But, um, you know, these midweeks, it, it can happen. And then it would just be a matter of us getting in down the road of determining the proper start date to the claim and then going through the eligibility review after that. Okay. 
Okay, uh, we're coming to the end of the webinar. I just wanted to mention that there was a question about health insurance. Um, I think Barbara answered it, but how do you, what health insurance at least can you offer through ECF health insurance options? We, we don't offer health insurance. We are navigators for the New York State of Health. So what we can do is help people identify what kind of insurance they need, um, where they fit, and help enroll them into the best insurance plan for their needs. Um, as well, we can provide general health insurance counseling, address problems with insurance. Um, and as I said before, we also have a health center for people in the arts. Thank you for that, Barbara. Okay. Thank you all. This was this was such a comprehensive uh, discussion and offer of support. I really hope that this was helpful for for all that attended today. Again, we will have this available on YouTube. This webinar. We will also follow up with each regis registrant uh, with the list of resources mentioned today. Um, we are here to support our workers. Um, Ultimately, so we we understand the situation that we're that you're all in. So uh, please stay tuned um, as we're hoping in the future there may be there may be more uh, webinars and and information of support. Um, to our panelists, thank you. Uh, if you have any last thoughts, please please share them. Um, otherwise, uh, we will continue to stay in touch. And everyone, please hang in there and. Be on the lookout for for more information. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.